The intent of this video is to review the types of bombs and tactics Allies adopted in destroying German hardened targets in World War II. Hardened structures are designed to resist attack from artillery projectiles and bombs. They are usually constructed from thick, reinforced concrete and or steel doors and walls. This could include pillboxes, gun emplacements, U-boat pens, and flak towers. This video will focus on air bombardment of the smaller pillboxes and gun fortifications. A follow-on video will focus on the destruction tactics and munitions adopted in attacking super fortifications like U-boat pens and submarine factories. These structures were attacked with specifically designed heavy fortification bombs like Disney rocket-powered bomb, Tall Boys, and Grand Slams, as shown in this comparative sketch from a declassified October 1946 Army Air Force Proving Ground Report document titled, Comparative Tests of the Effectiveness of Large Bombs Against Reinforced Concrete Structures Anglo-American Bomb Test Project Ruby. This video will focus on the capabilities of bombs of this size and smaller. Let's first take a look at characteristics of typical German hardened fortifications. This table lists the type and number of defensive positions at Omaha Beach from a September 1944 Office of the Chief Engineer document titled Report on German Concrete Fortifications. Only four of the 20 field guns between sizes of 75 and 155 millimeters were mounted with concrete fortifications. This image shows one of the four 155 millimeter gun concrete fortifications. This image shows a 155 millimeter non-fortified exposed shooting position for reference. The fortified structure's reinforced concrete roof is 7 feet thick. The walls are 9 feet 8 inches thick. The structure's plan form size equates to 46 feet by 50 feet. This image from an October 1944 14th Corps U.S. Army document title Breaching the Siegfried Line outlines the geometry of a typical German pillbox. The walls are 6 feet 7 inches and the roof is 7 feet 5 inches of reinforced concrete. The doors are constructed from a 1.1 inch thick steel plate. In planning on destroying these types of targets, a plane should be dropping bombs which have the capability of either causing major structural damage or perforating the roof with a hole. These are the types and sizes of bombs that were used to attack targets over Germany, as listed on this table from a December 1945 document titled Army Air Force Statistical Digest. They are classified as either general purpose high explosive, armor piercing, and semi armor piercing. 99.2% of the bombs dropped were high explosive general purpose, 0.024% were armor piercing, and 0.74% were semi armor piercing. This chart outlines the characteristics of general purpose, semi-armor piercing, and armor piercing bombs from a September 1945 National Defense Research Committee document titled Weapons Data Fire Impact Explosion. The columns include the designation and weight class, actual full-up bomb weight in pounds, type of explosive fill, weight of a fill in pounds, charge to weight ratio, bomb dimensions, and the bomb casing wall thickness couple observations from the table. The explosive fill of the general purpose bomb is four times the explosive fill of an armor piercing bomb of the same weight class. This is due to the armor piercing bomb's reduced volume long slender body and its case thickness around 2.4 times the thickness of a general purpose bomb. A cutaway of the 1,000 pound class general purpose semi-armor piercing and armor piercing bombs from a 1960 Chief of the Bureau of Naval Weapons document titled Aircraft Bombs, Fuses, and Associated Components. Couple observations. The semi-armor piercing and armor piercing bombs are longer and slender than the general purpose bombs for better penetration and hardened targets. The armor piercing bombs and semi-armor piercing bombs are detonated by tail fuse only. Additional characteristics of both the armor-piercing and semi-armor-piercing bombs are listed on this chart from an August 1944 Office of the Chief of Ordnance document titled Terminal Ballistics Data. The tail fuse adopted for both bombs is the ANM-102A2. This chart lists characteristics of this fuse. The fuse can be set for instantaneous detonation triggered by inertia contact or defined detonation time delay of 0 0.01, 0 0.025, 0 0.1, or 0 0.24 seconds after target contact. The fuse's primer detonator defines the detonation timing. The bomb will be armed after 150 to 170 Bain revolutions. This graphic shows the urban structural damage sustained from a 100, 250, 
500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 pound class general purpose bomb. The structural damage is due to the pressure wave, earth shock, and bomb casing fragments. There is a problem with bombing these small hardened targets. Generally speaking, bombing of concrete reinforced structures is not profitable. This is due to the low bombing accuracy and low strike velocities. Large armor piercing bombs dropped from high altitudes will be effective against all but the thickest concrete roofs, but the higher you bomb, the less accurate the bombing. Hence, there'll be a lot of misses. General purpose bombs are effective for open fortifications, but not effective against thick concrete roof structures, as their thin steel casing is not strong enough to withstand the impact. Their thin steel case will rupture, and they will also have a low penetrating ability. This chart lists the altitude of release where you would expect bomb case deformation or rupture when striking a thick concrete slab. These columns represent the bomb type and weight class, altitude of release for bomb case deformation, and bomb case rupture. A general purpose bomb casing will rupture if dropped on a thick concrete slab from altitudes between 3 to 20,000 feet, depending on the bomb's weight and concrete strength. At impact, a general purpose bomb's case will, will deform and rupture with a low order explosive detonation. No rupture is expected for either the semi-armor piercing or armor piercing bombs released from any altitude. This image shows the damage of a low order impact of a 500 pound general purpose bomb on a thick concrete slab from a December 1944 War Department Office of the Chief of Ordnance document titled Standard Artillery and Ammunition Against Reinforced Concrete Pillboxes. The M64 bomb was dropped from an altitude of 10,000 feet. A case rupture occurred with a subsequent low order detonation. This page discusses the differences between perforation and penetration damage. Perforation occurs when the bomb damage completely opens up a hole through the slab, like shown in this image. Penetration damage is a part through crater with or without far side scabbing, like shown in these images. Given this definition, we would say the bomb caused some minor penetration damage, but no perforation damage. This does not imply general purpose bombs are completely useless against concrete. They can be effective against thin concrete slabs. This table lists the maximum thickness of concrete a general purpose bomb can perforate if dropped at an altitude above 5,000 feet. A 1,000 pound class general purpose bomb would be effective for a reinforced concrete slab at a thickness of 2 feet or less. If striking concrete at thicknesses greater than 2 feet, we would expect case rupture. Semi-armor piercing bombs are optimized to provide sufficient explosive fill and concrete penetrating capability without case rupture. They are the best bombs to be deployed against concrete fortifications. This table lists the maximum thickness of concrete that a semi-armor piercing and armor piercing bombs can perforate the slab. The first row is the altitude of release in feet, assuming a true airspeed of 250 miles per hour. The second row is the number of bombs dropped to have a 90% probability of striking a target 30 feet by 30 feet. The third row is the bomb striking velocity. The last rows are the concrete slab strength and maximum thickness in feet where perforation damage occurs. Couple observations from the table. A 30 foot by 30 foot target would be a small pillbox. The number of bombs to ensure target strike is strongly dependent on altitude. An armor piercing bomb has 27% more perforation power than a semi armor piercing bomb at a high altitude release. At a low altitude release, the perforation power is around 10%. This image shows pillbox damage from a 1,000 pound class semi-armor piercing bomb released from 10,000 feet. Let's illustrate usage of this chart with an example. This image shows a German concrete fortification for a 50 millimeter gun at Utah Beach. We will need the overhead platform size of the fortification, the thickness of the concrete roof, and the strength of the concrete. This image outlines the 50 millimeter gun's fortification geometry. Assume a platform size is 30 feet by 30 feet. The roof thickness equates to six feet, zero inches. The strength of the concrete equates to 3,400 PSI, which is considered medium quality. All of this information was provided by the French Resistance Intelligence. We can flag all of the bomb types and weight values that meet or exceed a slab thickness of 6 feet within the 3,400 PSI strength row. Combat constraints to consider. We do not want to bomb at altitudes below 20,000 feet due to the increase in flak exposure. However, bombing from 30,000 feet is less accurate and will require more bombers. 
The most effective bomb equates to 1,000 pound size semi-armor piercing bomb. Given these parameters, it will take 1,300 semi-armor piercing bombs of the 1,000 pound class size needed to destroy the pillbox, assuming a well-seasoned and accurate crew and desiring a 90% probability of bomb contact. A B-17 can carry a maximum of eight 1,000 pound semi-armor piercing bombs as defined on this page from a 1945 B-17 field service manual. The stations to be loaded are listed in this row. This mission will require 163 B-17s to achieve a 90% probability of striking the target. Bomber Command took a relook at usage of general purpose bombs in the destruction of concrete structures based on this page. In this attack, a general purpose bomb detonated 3 feet from a concrete reinforced structure. The bomb's crater was 45 feet in width and 14 feet in depth. This damaged the gun support, which rendered it unusable. Near misses which lo with large general purpose bombs may induce more damage than direct hits. Near misses need to be close enough to the fortifications to be effective. It is recommended that large 2,000 pound general purpose bombs with a .025 second time delay be used to attack pillboxes with concrete roofs of thicknesses of 2 feet or less. The bomb will be effective either by direct strike or near miss as long as the bomb does not ricochet. Did any of this data surprise you? If you've enjoyed this evaluation and discussion, please consider engaging with the video by liking and or commenting.